Right, thanks everyone for coming, and sorry we couldn't fit more people in. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Tim Burke. I'm Vice President of Linux Engineering at Red Hat. And I'm going to talk about a little walk in the woods I did. And I'm going to try to relate it. It's not just a travel story. I'm going to try to give some lessons on how, how this can apply to being a better engineer, a better programmer, a better tester, um, a better person, really. So before we get into that, uh, have you ever heard of a book called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten? And really what that means, raise your hand, who's, who's ever heard of that book? A lot of the people. And what it shows is that it's often like the little simple things that really make people more effective. And so that's really all I'm going to be talking about is little simple things that, you know, this, this helped me learn. So before we get into the, the talk, it's not everybody knows what the Appalachian Trail is. It's a really rugged hiking trail through mountains in the United States. It travels for 3,500 kilometers or 2,200 miles. And it's in the woods. There's no restaurants. There's no hotels. You carry everything, your tent, your backpack. And um, every year, uh, about 20% of the people who start the hike complete it. So um, this hike took me four and a half months to complete. So it's, uh, that's not for everybody, just to be out in the woods that long. But, um, but it's really all about like, how do we succeed? How do we set goals? So you know, not everybody's going to do something like this, and that's not what I'm going to try to convince you. What I am going to try to convince you is that every one of you can set goals for yourself. Everyone can do special things if they want it hard enough and if they're willing to put the effort into it. So let's talk about uh, what, how, how, my, how this dream began. So I've been hiking all my life in the mountains. And but it's mostly day hiking. You know, you just drive your car up to the mountains, you hike, and then you come home. Um, and so this picture is taken in the White Mountains of New Hampshire in the United States. This is actually part of the Appalachian Trail. It goes over these mountains. So this is one section. And so I would hike there uh, a lot. And so it, it was a dream of mine to hike the Appalachian Trail. And like, who wouldn't think, like, wow, that would be awesome. I want to do that. That's cool. And Dreams are really great because dreams set, uh, allow you to challenge yourself to, to grow. But dreams are, if you don't do something about it, they're just fantasy. They're, they're just dreams, right? And so everybody can dream and say, yeah, I'd like to do that. That looks like fun. But if you don't make the first step and do it, you'll, you'll never realize a dream. And so the only person who's going to help you set a goal and do a goal is yourself, right? And so most people think, I couldn't do that, but you really could, but you could set other goals because, you know, your life is really important, right? And it's really important not just to, like, go through it and not think. Um, this is kind of a morbid thought, but one quote that I like is that, I don't fear death, I fear an unlived life. So this is really about living. So, um, so this is a picture of my daughter and I. So the other thing that was cool is my daughter did half of the hike with me. She did 1,000 miles of it. So it was a really great experience to be together. And so when you're trying to set these um, goals, it's usually you're not the first person who's ever done it, right? And so. There's other people who can help you. You can learn, you can research things, which is really cool. So you never have to do it alone. And when I, as a, when I was hiking um, for many years in, in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, I would see other people who were through hikers, people who were doing the whole hike. And I would think, wow, they are so cool. They are my heroes. Uh, they're really special people. And 
you know, then I thought about it, and it says, like, what made them special? You know, what do they have that I don't have? That they took the first step, that they did it, right? And you can all have goals, you can all have dreams, but if you don't take the first step, you'll never get it. So it's really about, it takes courage to do that. I mean, I had never hiked for more than a week. So, but you know what? There's not much difference between a three-day hike and a four-month hike. So, so, and so a lot of these goals, like if you can do something small and just keep working at it, you can build on it. And that's the same with, with your career. You know, you get skills and you just get uh, build on them and, and just develop more skills. And the next thing you know, you'll be adding eBPF to the kernel or something like that, right? So it's, uh, it's something that everybody can do. But if you have a dream and you want to set goals, I would assert that if you have an easy goal, it's not worth doing. Right? You know? Seriously, I'm about, I'm about big goals, right? Set some hard challenges because I really think that, I really believe in no pain, no gain. I think that people grow through their experiences. So if, you, if you're developing a, a project and you start to add more features to it, you're going to learn every time and you just get better and better and better. And so set goals that you, can, that you can slowly and incrementally accomplish, but know that a real goal that you're going to grow for, it's never easy. And I'll, I'll tell, this, this is a picture. The first three weeks when I was on this hike, it was raining and about the same temperature as it is outside now. Like, how many people yesterday when they had to go out and stand at the food truck, were unhappy. Raise your hand. I was. It sucked. I didn't like that, right? But picture being out there for three weeks, like with that, but it was raining. It wasn't really raining yesterday. And so, but what I knew was those first three weeks, like you never know what the weather's going to be. And what I said was, can you imagine how, uh, pathetic or lame or wimpy it would look if I quit in the first three weeks, right? That would be like bad. And so I knew it's like, I can't come home and tell people I only made it three weeks. Well, it's the same thing. Like if you set a goal for yourself, maybe the first three weeks are going to be the hardest part, right? And don't quit in those first three weeks. Just keep going because that's what it takes to achieve goals. So how did I prepare to be in the woods for four and a half months. And most people think, well, I must have hiked a lot, right? That's the best, that's what the training is all about. It's the hiking. It's like, no, that was not what the training was about. The training was about the not hiking, honestly. So it was things like, um, things like um, how to, um, what am I going to eat? Trying to do some homework for that. Or if you looked at the reason why most people failed on this hike wasn't because they weren't uh, capable of hiking. It was because of other things. Like they didn't prepare, like they didn't have, uh, they had pr troubles back at home. Like they had pets that they were worried about or kids that they were worried about or they didn't have the, enough money saved up. So my point is, it's often the non-obvious things that prevent you from reaching your goal. And this is, I think, important for work goals, because a lot of people think that, um, hey, how do, some people ask me, like, um, because I'm vice president of Linux engineering, p people might say, hey, I want to do that. You know, I, I want, how do I succeed to get to that job? And it's usually not um, the best programmers who grow into that, it's people who, for example, are like good communicators. Like, so for all your jobs, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a tester or a developer, if you can't communicate well with other people, you won't be able to, to really succeed. So often people think, if I get smarter or more technical, that's the best path to grow your career. But it's really, how, are you good at coordinating things? Are you good at planning with other people? Are you 
um, collaborative with other people? And do you, uh, when you talk with other people, do you listen as much as you talk? So it's like those kind of things that I call blind spots that most people, when they want to advance to the next level or get a promotion, it's usually not because of technical skills that prevent their um, promotions. It's how well do they cooperate, you know, play well with others. It's really more important than people think. So planning. Um, those of you who know me know that uh, maybe Stephen will vouch. No, Stephen's worse than me on this. So I will, in my career, I will microscopically plan every single detail. And Stephen's even more proficient at that than I am. So, but if you looked at, for a four and a half month hike, you can't plan every day because uh, you don't know how the weather's gonna be, you don't know, like some people try to plan like, on day 30 I'm gonna be here, and on day 60 I'm gonna be there, and 90 I'm gonna be there. So I knew my tendencies was to over plan, but for this hike, what I realized is to do that, it's not possible. So. The whole, my whole point here is that sometimes when you want to achieve a goal, you have to try things differently to be able to like step outside into the unknown. Like I, before this, I, my longest hike was a week. So I didn't know what a, what a week and a day would look like, you know? And so you have to be able to have like faith in yourself and confidence to say like, that what you've done before, if you stretch it and grow and try new things, that you'll, it, it'll, you'll succeed more than, than if you just keep doing the same thing all the time. And so the other thing is so, for, but there are other people, some people are like, who went on this hike and said, um, who had little hiking experience and they, they did no planning. Like, some, like people like me and Steven were over planners there are some people who are under planners. So basically, know your tendencies and know uh, basically what, what you need to do just enough to succeed at a goal. So then if you want to achieve a new goal, you have to build the scenario to make that happen. So for example, in, in this case, because I was a manager of a large team, uh, what I had to do was spend a lot of time uh, I planned for this trip several years in advance by working with my team and uh, people around me to make sure that everything would still get done at work. And you know what? Some people said, um, they said, aren't you afraid to leave your job because of two things? One, they might say, we didn't need him anyways because we did just fine. And two, what if they said, this, this um, smarter people have, um, you know, have sort of filled in the gaps and sort of done that? And some people fear that. And I think that's, I, I welcome that because I think we always need stronger leaders and we always need people to do more things. So if you want to do something different in your career, try to grow other people to help them sort of fill in the gap so that you can do something different. And uh, just so it's, it's not just, a, goals are never just about you. That's my point. It's like, even though I hiked this from the beginning to end, there were so many people involved, friends who helped out, people at work who did, you know, kept Red Hat going. And it's, so other people grew, benefited and grew from this trip. And so, I came back and the team did just fine without me. And so what that means is that there were other people who like continued that, that and grew in that stuff and I could focus on other things. So it's like there's plenty of challenges, plenty of goals. So don't feel that you always have to do the same thing because you know, help other people to do that. And have the courage just to try something different because um, you never know how it's going to turn out. So you might think that it's, this was all about um, just the beautiful scenery or um, some people think it's just being alone, just to get out in the woods, 
you know, just be away from people. And that's part of it. Um, but what I really realized was that the people involved were half the fun because we shared experiences. We learned from each other. It might be like, you know, a lot of the talk on the trail was, uh, what, what's the, uh, do, are there any restaurants in like the next town that you might go through? Because it was, we were, um, we didn't have a lot of food. You had to carry your food maybe. You would go through a town like every three days, three to four days, so you'd have to carry all your food be, be along the way. So you were constantly hungry, and you were constantly dirty and smelly. And so this is, this is my uh, peers out on the hike. The other thing I lo really liked about this hike was I called it a classless system. And by classless, I mean we were all grubby hikers. There were no vice president hikers. There were no like associate engineer hikers. We were all just smelly hikers. And I like uh, just being, uh, I just, I, even at Red Hat, I just consider myself one of the, one of the people on the team. And if I'm helpful in this, I'm, I'm better at this than I used to be at writing device drivers. So I think we're all better off this way. <laughs> but how do I relate this to work is things like, we didn't know it. Even though we were all individually hiking, we together, we were important to each other's success because we taught, we learned things from each other. Like, hey, how do, you know, someone might be cooking something that was interesting, or someone might know what the next, what was coming ahead, what the next section was like. So it's the same thing with, with um, developers. It's help each other out and know that you're not there alone so that um, someone else has probably done something similar. And I think a lot of times engineers are, they just want to sit there and uh, type all day and not talk to anybody, right? And so the, the important things I see here is, that I want to relate to your career, is that talking and engaging with people is more important than you think. Because the more you can communicate and talk with people, the more impact you can have. You can do bigger team projects. You can get more done. You can be more effective and understand what the users need or want. And so just try not to um, you know, just be on your keyboard all day. And also, just things like coming here to DevConf, right? It's you uh, see other people in the hallway, the hallway track, or you, you, know, you go to the parties and you, you, you talk to them. It's, that's more, you, you don't realize it when you're here, right? But when you go back home and think about it, yeah, it's like I've made connections to these people. I know them, and so we're part of a community. So instead of being smelly hikers, you're smelly developers, and you, but you smell together and it's all good. <laughs> so as I mentioned, um, on the trail, because you had to carry all of your food or, and you had to get water. You should, we got water from streams. Um, so, there was, so you were constantly hungry because you couldn't possibly carry enough food to, to uh, and so, but there were these people, volunteers, who did what was called trail magic. So trail magic is people would sometimes leave food or drink uh, usually by roads or someplace convenient, so that um, just free for hikers. And sometimes you could get this, uh, you know, you could get it today and maybe tomorrow you would be lucky, but sometimes you could go three weeks and you would, there'd be nothing, right? So it, it was unexpected. And, the th and so here's an example. This was a, a cooler and there were um, sodas in it or drinks. And drinks like sodas were really special because you're never going to carry something like that because it's too heavy, right? So it was really, it was really cool. And so they're just, you know, uh, people just generosity and kindness. And usually you don't you don't know who who left them there. They're not looking for a thank you. They just want to help and be part of a broader community. And if you took uh, uh, one of these bottles out of that cooler, 
it doesn't mean that you're weak or anything like that. It means that someone cares about you. So how, how can I draw um, a work or a technology analogy to that? Is ever since that trip, and, and I'm not going to like ask you to pledge like Dan Walsh did, but I have um, set a personal goal that I have um, succeeded in ever since, and that is that every week I do trail magic at work to at least one person, usually more. And no, I'm not leaving sodas or food on people's desk. <laughs> That's not what I do. But what I do is I look on things like, um, you know, this Red Hat, this a million mail lists or, you, you know, someone you might have seen in a meeting that you think that someone could use some help or you see someone, you know, um, maybe even um, not behaving, not, not being a good team player, right? And so sometimes um, what I'll do is I'll send someone an email. I was like, hey, I have an idea. I know you're trying to do this project and did you think of you know, trying it this way or asking someone that? And, or I'll come up to someone in the hallway after a meeting and say, hey, that was a great presentation. You really good at, did a good job. I especially liked this point. You're really good at that. So it's just encouragement or advice. It's, it's sharing and, and a teamwork. And it's really easy to do, right? It doesn't cost me anything. But all I, you know, it's just a, and now it's a habit that I have. At first it was like, okay, um, have I done it this week? Have I helped anyone? And it, it only takes a, a minute or two, right? I'm not talking about big things. And it helps some other people know that they're not alone on the trail, that you're there with them, maybe you've done it before, and you can help them. And just know that more people succeed when others help them out. So if there's one thing and only one thing you take away from this talk is do trail magic once a week for someone small, right? That's all. OK. So other thing, um, so this is this picture. Um, so the trail would sometimes come by um, right through towns, which was awesome because you could you know, just get, go to a restaurant or sometimes take a shower. Um, but other times, you would have to hitchhike. Uh, do we know what hitchhiking means? You try to like wave cars down and get a ride. So this is me in the back of a pickup truck going into town. And um, there's, in the back, I, that's probably like um, cow shit or cow crap in the bottom of the truck. But that's fine. Um, so, but the thing is, is that it was, there were some people on this hike who were only, the only thing they cared about was finishing, right? So remember, this, most people take six months to complete this. And they were, they were like, oh, I'm, I'm not making as much progress as I need. I need to go faster. Or they're really like, they're overanalyzing and they're overthinking the situation. And sometimes if all you think about is the, the finish, whether that's, you know, when the release is done or something like that. If all you think about is a, a goal that's far away, you kind of can miss the, uh, the views or, or miss the um, celebrating with your team members the small milestones along the way. And so what I want to point out here is that it's important not to, to just be like, um, you know, heads down, you know, just work, 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 just sometimes uh, congratulate other people for finishing something or just say, well, this is cool, we're halfway there. Because if, if, you're, if you're doing something, if it takes six months to finish something, and if you only think like, oh, I've got six months, and now it's like, I've got five months and 30 days, and I've got five months and 29 days, it kind of sucks, right? But just take it s slow along the way um, and know that over the, the, you know, the, those six months, you're going to learn new things, you're going to grow, and you're going to meet new people. So have some fun, and, um, and it'll be so much better. Uh, don't carry what you don't need. 
so this is the, uh, the backpack that I would have had. And so in that would be is um, a tent, a sleeping bag, a cooking stove, um, all the clothing I would have, all my food. So you can see it's, it's not a lot of stuff. And so what I thought was, gee, what, because, um, you know, the heavier your bag is, the, uh, it's, the harder it is, you know. So it's really all about getting small and, and less. And so it's really amazing what you can live without. Like, I would think, like, oh, am I going to miss my cars or I'm going to miss uh, my wife or I'm going to miss, you know, other stuff. It's like, yeah, you do, sort of. But, uh, <laughs> but it's really like, it shows that you don't need a lot to, to be happy, you, you know. And so what does that have to do with work? And so I think it's really important to differentiate must have things that are nice versus what you really need. And so I'll, I'll give some examples. Um, one I like to say is sometimes you need to go down to go up. And so I, I say that as part of leadership training. So I'll give an example. Um, I've had some managers, and this is the same for engineers. You, you could be an engineer in a team, and you could be the expert on something, whatever, whatever you're the best at, right? And you, know, you might do that for, you know, for several years, and then you might want to do something different, right? Grow, stretch. But sometimes you might say, hey, I was the expert over here. I had a lot of respect. You know, I'm super awesome over here. Everyone thinks I'm great. If I come over here and do something else, I'm not going to be the expert anymore, right? Somebody else will know more, and so I'm going to lose some of my cred or, you know, power or, you know, and it's the same with managers. Some managers say, hey, I've managed this team for a long time. I've got 50 people in this team. I want to do something different. But if I come over there, there's only 20 people because, you know, it's, uh, it's small. I'm learning something. And to me, like, that's fine because when I say um, go down to come up, it's like maybe you have to leave being the, the, the smartest guy in the room to, to, know, to, to get somewhere else. But know that a lot of people see your careers are not being narrowly focused in just one thing, right? It's really a lot of the people who are, who are strongest know multiple um, spaces or multiple different technologies. And so don't be afraid to leave something of comfort, something that you're big, and go to something that you're small. Because that's really, because in through your whole career, Maybe you'll become a, more of a, a generalist. Maybe you'll become more of an architect by knowing more areas. So don't be afraid to do that. Resilience. So um, you know you can set up all the plans you want, but know that things aren't always going to go exactly how you plan them. So this was an example. There were some um, they're like shelters or lean-tos um, along the trails. So they were usually like a, um, it would have a roof and three walls. So like one of the walls would be open, exposed. And so the only time I would s sleep in one of those when it, if it was like raining really a lot, right? And because the reason why you don't want to stay in one of these shelters is because people snore so loud you cannot imagine. <laughs> and they're full of mice. And so I, you have mice crawling over your face in your sleeping bags. You just get used to that. But they, they chew your socks and stuff like that. So you try to avoid that. So this isn't just in one of those shelters. And this is people hanging all their wet stuff that's just trying to drip down a little bit. So. You're going to have some rainy days in your career, you know. Um, you're going to break the, the builds, you know. Your people will knack your patches. Uh, you know, your manager will try to get you to do compliance training. I mean, there'll be all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of things. And so, know that 
um, there's going to be some of that stuff. But again, this goes back to the beginning slide. It's like no pain, no gain. It's, you know, you try to set goals. There will be, know that there will be uh, challenges and difficulties, but know that you grow through those. And it's like, you know, if you can handle one rainy day, then if it's like rains for three weeks, you'll be fine too. And so a lot of this stuff too is um, that, you know, you try to, to succeed at a, the people who succeeded on, on this hike are people who only had the commitment that they will do today and they will come back tomorrow. That's all you need to commit to, right? Is I'm gonna keep going today and tomorrow. And if you can keep doing that, it builds on it. And like I said before, any real goal, if it's, uh, if it's easy, it's not worth doing and you'll grow your skills through these challenges. So this is a picture on, on the summit. This is the end of the Appalachian Trail. And it was a really exciting moment. And then what, right? What happens after that? Well, so um, I came back to work. Some people didn't think I would come back. Uh, <laughs> but, or maybe they hoped I didn't come back. But I told people I was coming back. So I, you always do what I say. So this was pretty cool. I came back. And this was my office uh, when I came back, uh, set up with tents and stuff like that. And I really felt, I was really happy with this experience. Um, and it, it really showed that, you know, uh, I could be exceptional and that you could be exceptional too if you wanted to do it. Um, I really enjoyed the experience. And I think that the, my team grew as well because they got to do other things to, to help fill in the blanks. So um, when I came back, um, there were people who, from Red Hat and other places who helped me out along the way. Um, like there was um, one person, he, um, he contacted me before I went on the hike and he said, hey, the, the trail goes right by my house. Uh, why don't you stay at my house when you came through? So I did. And this is someone I never met before. And his wife took this smelly hiker into their house. And they were awesome. So it was just like I was very thankful to them. I was thankful to the people at work for um, stepping up and you know making me Because I wasn't worried about Red Hat. I really wasn't, cause, but Red Hat did fine. And the thing I'm doing, I then did, which I'm, I hope I'm doing right here, is to encourage other dreamers because we all have, we all can succeed if we want it hard enough and if we put in the effort. And so what I, I talked before about what makes a good goal, like what's a challenging goal to me? So these are my ingredients for, I think, what makes a good journey or, or what are good goals. I like goals that not everybody has done, right? If everybody's done it, it's not so interesting for me. Um, I like goals that not everybody could do. Um, or it's more like, I think it's the first one. I, because every, pretty much everybody could have done this hike, but not everyone has. But I like goals where you don't know the outcome. Like, I didn't know if I was going to succeed. Um, but I will say, on the trail, I never had any doubts that I would finish. There were, I, never, I was never really tempted to quit, which was cool. But it, it was hard. There were days that were unpleasant. Um, there were days when you were covered in mosquitoes, bugs. Uh, but I wouldn't change a thing. Um, but I like goals that have, I like long-term goals, passion, perseverance. So I think everyone in their career can set, whether it's uh, uh, obtaining a master's degree or whether it's learning a new skill. Often these take time. They're usually never easy, but you can all do it. So some people might think, um, so what's next, right? So I came back from that hike. I worked for three years, almost, 
And so um, I just announced uh, this week, or was it last week? I'm losing time. But, and I just announced that I've got another goal that I'm setting for myself. So this goal, this is going to be a bicycle goal that I have. And so what I'm going to be doing is I, I get this new bicycle. I bought it last year. And I put some bags on it. So I've got clothing and tent and some spare tires, right? So you. And at this point, um, I've only done one bike trip in my life. That was a three, I've done a three-day bike trip last summer. So I've done, my experience is one bike trip. That's what I got. So what can I do with, one, with three days worth of biking experience? Why don't I cross the United States? So that's what I'm going to do. So this is a uh, 8,000 kilometers or 5,000 miles, because I figure if I can do three days, it's like, what did I say? You do today and you do tomorrow, right? So if I can do three days, I can do three months. What, what could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not a real biker. I don't know a lot about bikes. I'm not very mechanically proficient. But, and I don't know what I'll encounter along the way. But I'm not afraid to try. And that's the thing. Set your goals. Don't be afraid to try. But there's, but, you know, there's other people I can talk to. So I'm going to be starting this in early May of this year. Uh, and so I'm going across the country, uh, starting on the East Coast and going across to the West. And then my daughter lives in San Francisco. So I'm going to stop at her house. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. What's that? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump trip. Yeah, exactly. So to me, um, success is a journey, not the destination. So, you know, it's it, hiking the Appalachian Trail was not about just the finish line, the end. It was about enjoying the trip all the way. And so I hope with you and your goals in your career that you can set ambitious goals, that you know that. You can be special if you want to be, if you're willing to put in the effort. And you can accomplish special things if you want. And so enjoy the ride. Enjoy your career because uh, I'll just rather try to, I'm making this up. But it's like a career that, let's try to think about this. Um, a career that you don't challenge yourself and grow is not a career worth living. So. You know, look, I've, I worked for uh, 35 years. I did different things, and I think I'm better for it. So that's what I encourage you guys. Challenge, grow, and help each other out along the way and enjoy the journey. So thank you. <laughs> OK, so let's open up for questions. I don't know if we have a microphone or I, it's a small room. Yeah, I, just repeat the question. Okay. All right. How big was your hiking group? Did you do it alone or with group? Ah, okay. That, the question was, did I do it alone or as a group? I did it alone. I started alone because for a couple reasons. It's very hard to find like somebody who's willing to take four and a half months off from work to do something. That's number one. Number two, it's really hard to find somebody who's going at the same pace that you are. Because if someone's going too slow, it doesn't fit, or too fast, it, you can break. So I went alone. And, but what I found was that as I hiked, there were, um, you saw like over the first two weeks, there were people who were like doing the same pace. You would see them like at the end of the day at the campsite. And so, <coughs> sorry, there was another guy <coughs> who um, we were going at the same pace. So we basically did the first half of the hike together. You know, so I, I met them along the way, but I didn't know going into it. And then, but there were other people that you would see. So it wasn't just the two of us. It was, you know, but you would meet different people. And then um, my daughter 
did um, most of the second half of the hike with me, which was really special. And so for the bike trip that I'm doing, I am going with uh, another guy who, and he's someone that my first uh, day out of uh, college, my first day on the job, uh, I was wor worked with him. So it's just you never know who you who you end up with, which is good because he's a bicyclist. He knows how to fix bikes, and I don't. So that's helpful. Do you not run the person next year? Or bike <laughs> uh, no, I won't. This is uh, this is my last uh, DevCon. Uh, and you might say, why? Uh, I love Brno. I spent six months in Brno. Um, Brno's an awesome place. But I'm retiring from Red Hat uh, at the end of April. And uh, why? Uh, to do more journeys. That's why. People said, you know, what's, what's, people, uh, say, uh, what's your retirement plan? My plan is to play outside. That's all there is to it. Some lessons from along the journey? Mm -hmm. That's what the whole talk was about. Um, <laughs> but let me try to uh, think. Um, maybe more the details, more the stuff. So, hiking? Uh, hiking detail? Yeah. Uh, hmm. OK, uh, so hiking details. Well, this is, I'll give you an example. Um, does this work? I thought that when I went on the hike, that I would learn a lot about cooking, because it's all, you would you'd think there'd be experts there, right? And so, but you know what? Everybody was so tired from hiking all day and that nobody wanted to spend any time cooking. So uh, uh, this is my, I'll teach you my entire trail uh, menu. So, uh, <laughs> And then we had, um, uh, okay, so this is what it all came down to. It was, it was every meal, every dinner was one of these and one of those. <laughs> and you know what? It was tasted great because when you're out there, even your shoe would taste good. <laughs> so that's something learned. <laughs> so no, no. Okay, that's a that's a good question. Um, so this is actually so this was a short trip. This was a three day trip. So. I have, the, there's, what I'm going to have is two bags. This is one bag, there's only one, there's two. So, um, but I went on this trip. They, I joined uh, um, some friends I know. They were going across country last summer. And I joined them for just three days of it. And they, so they had a lot more stuff than I'm going to bring because what I learned was when I hiked the Appalachian Trail, I had two, um, two sets of clothing, the one I was wearing and the other one. That's it, right? And so, but these other bikers that I saw, they had like four sets of clothing. And they had, one, one guy had, he had like an iPad and he had his phone and he had like a solar panels and he had uh, batteries that were huge, all this stuff. And so um, 
I have, I have not tried yet to pack my equipment into a, these bicycle bags, but I know that I'm going to have plenty of space. Like most, of the, most bikers have uh, difficulty to, you know, thin out, to, to carry less. I'm, I know, like, how little you can succeed with, so I'm not worried about, um, I'm going to be carrying less than most bikers, and I'm going to be happy with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you said a lot of things that was similar between one week and the, the three months. But yeah. Was there like a certain aspect that was completely different? Okay, I'll try to relay that question. So um, I said, you know, I've done one week hike. And so what's the difference between one week and four and a half months? Um, well, let me think about that. First off, um, I bought specialized equipment. So in order to get really lightweight gear, they don't sell that at stores. It's like niche or it's like boutique. It's like you have to go online and like these forums. They're, it's special lightweight backpacks. It's special lightweight sleeping bags. It's, so that was one thing that was different was the gear. But aside from the gear, um, there really is no difference. Like I would, if I, knowing now with this experience, if I was going on a one week hike, I would take the same gear that I took on the four and a half month hike. So there was, because you have so little stuff, there's so little luxuries that, um, yeah. And so my lesson there now is that if I did a one week hike, I will be carrying less than I used to carry before. So I've learned how little you can get away with. So you mentioned luxuries. Were there any luxuries okay. that you took with you? Yeah, so the question is, are there any luxuries I carried? Everybody carried luxuries, something different. So I'll tell you, my daughter, she had one of the most special luxuries. My daughter really likes coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink coffee, but she loves coffee. Not only does she like... So on the trail, like some people um, have they're these packets, it's called like Vaya, they, they're powder, coffee powder mix. That's, that's, the most, like some that's the most that some people had. My daughter had this thing, it was about this big, and it was um, a, a grinder. You grind the beans, and then you, it was a pour over. You pour the water and drips the coffee. So we would be at, you know, Days like way out in you know days out in the woods, and it's quiet, and there'll be other people at the campsite, and she would get out her coffee grind, and go, you know, make, which is loud, and people would be like, "Wow, is that real coffee?" You know, they were like, <laughs> and so she was, and she would share, and it was she was just very popular. Put it that way. <laughs> so that was her luxury. My luxury, let me think. What did I have? Uh, I had a pillowcase. Uh, I didn't, didn't bring a pillow, but I had like a, a soft uh, cover that I could put smelly clothes in and use that as a pillow. Uh, I had, um, what else did I have? Oh, I, as you saw in that other picture, I had an umbrella in the, in the early part, but I ended up getting rid of that because it was too. It was heavy. It just wasn't worth it. So that was a luxury I got rid of. Um, I swear I had a luxury, but I can't remember what it was. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like pro probably nothing much, you know. No, you know what I would have for luxury? This was. Um, I like uh, salsa chips. So whenever I would stop in a town, I would have coming out attached to the back of my bag would always be a bag of salsa chips when I head into the woods. So that was a luxury. Uh, during this multi-month trip, were you completely disconnected from the internet and any social OK. So yeah, this, the question was, w during the trip, was I disconnected from the internet and other forms of social contact? So um, I did carry my cell phone with me. 
Uh, but it was in airplane mode most of the time because you didn't have reception most of the time. I would come through a town like every three days. So I like posted on Facebook, uh, called my wife, text, whatever. Um, and I would like download, when I was in town, I'd download podcasts from, uh, you know, listen to along the trail. Um, but so, yeah, I was somewhat connected. Like occasionally when you were on like a mountain that had reception, but that was rare. So usually you were disconnected. And that was, that was fine. That was just part of the experience. And you know what? It was just like I was kind of happy to be away from listening to Donald Trump's stupidity. So it, was, it wasn't bad. All right, so let, one last question, then we'll be out of town. Heinz? On your previous activities, uh, have there been any like outstanding people you came across or you know, very impressive sites where you yeah. can learn like, lessons from people? And uh, did you get the goosebumps from you know, very beautiful sites? So were there like, special people that I learned from, <clears throat> or like, was I inspired by certain sites? I was, I was inspired every day along the hike. It was just, you know, well, not every day. Some days were crappy and raining all the time. But just picture, you know, this was special um, being at the end of a day, sitting on like a, a rock overlooking like the whole valley with my daughter cooking dinner. Like as a dad, you know, that's a special time. And so there's a lot of that. But in terms of special people, um, like, I had never, I had met through hikers, people who had hiked the AT, uh, who were doing it in New Hampshire. So they were helpful. There were some people that I do rock climbing with who had done it before, and they were helpful to help, like, show me, uh, tell me about the special uh, equipment that you might buy, or to help me to get rid of stuff I didn't need. So there were a lot of inspiring people. Um, there were people... Other people like at work who had accomplished great things. So there was a lot. It, there was no one person. It was a great community thing that inspired me. So, all right. So with that, I think we've used up the time. So I hope you've, uh, you can set your own goals. I hope you can do some trail magic for other people that you work with. And I hope you know that you can be special too. Thank you. <laughs>